All right, so there's a growing number of Christians, uh, air quotes Christians, they're not real Christians, I assure you of this, who deny the Trinity, the triune nature of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, guys, the Trinity is not something that you can just be like, agree to disagree on within Christianity. Like, this isn't something that you can just push aside and be like, oh, it's okay, as long as you have Jesus, this is the secondary issue. Okay, there is no such thing as, oh, we can just agree to disagree. Christians aren't people that should do that, okay? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. All right, this, this is talking about Jesus. The word was with God and the word was God. There's no contradictions here. It's not saying Jesus was Jesus and then Jesus was with, with Jesus, you know, or the father was with the father and then the father was father. Like, no, this is talking about the two different people who exist as God and the word that is the son of God, Jesus Christ became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, not the only father from the father or the only son from the son or the only God from the God. It is one son, one father. They're both God. This does not mean that Jesus is some sort of lesser God than God, but Jesus makes it clear that he does have a God. His God is the father. Revelation chapter three, the one who conquers, I'll make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never he shall go out of it. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God <laughs> out of heaven. Okay. Of course, Jesus says in Revelation chapter 22, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus very clearly is God. There's a lot of people who, who deny G Jesus' deity, but this is a different kind of person who uh, affirms Jesus' Jesus's deity, but they deny that God is actually three in one. They think he's just one in one. Or they think that God appears to us in three different forms, like water and ice and vapor or something like that. That's an analogy that these people use, which of course is heretical that is completely false. We see the vision in Daniel chapter 7. I, I used this in another video where I was proving the Trinity to Jews and Muslims, but I never would have thought that I should use this video for self-professing Christians as well. We see the Ancient of Days took his seat, his clothing white as snow. This is God the Father sitting on his throne, the Ancient of Days. This is obvious. And I saw in the night visions the Son of Man. This is Jesus, the Son of God. And he came to the Ancient of Days. Okay, so did Jesus come to himself? Did the Father father come to himself? Are these two different beings? No, I wouldn't say so. I'd say there's two different people because the father gives the son of man a dominion and a glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. You have two people, God the father and God the son receiving worship. Once again, we see Genesis chapter 19 where God rains fire and sulfur from heaven to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. We see verse 24. Actually, I'm going to go to the LSB version real quick just to show you because it's even, it's even even clearer when we go to this version. This is Yahweh on earth. He appeared to Abraham in the previous chapter. Yahweh reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from Yahweh out of heaven. Whoa. So Yahweh asked for God. Yahweh asked for Yahweh in heaven to fire, to, to rain down fire and brimstone. This is clearly two different people. Still one God. It's not saying, oh, there's a different Yahweh here and then a different Yahweh over there in heaven. No, this is one Yahweh, but one is just on the earth and then another, you know, the Father is in heaven. Again, when we say that God is one, we do not mean that he's one being in one person. He's one being in three different persons. We know for a fact that when God said, let us make man in our image, he created male and female in his image. So already, just based off the first chapter in the entire Bible, we see that man and woman are created in God's image. Together, they're made in God's image. It's not like us human beings just exist and then like I as myself can just live on, you know, and just reproduce produce or something. No. To take away the Trinity is just to take away this the beauty of God, you know? If God was just one person and one being, then what would be the point of creating male and female? Why wouldn't he just create us as one person that just reproduces on, on his own, right? Also, when it says, uh, man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, they shall become one flesh. This is the same one that is used when referring to our Lord God is one. It doesn't necessarily mean one person. Person. It just means a unit, a family unit. Like me and my parents, we are one family, even though we're three different people, okay? I'm just going to go to two more passages to prove this. Just hammer it down so that you guys don't have any doubts about this. Again, I don't know why we're talking about that. I don't know who's so... 
I'm just saying they're stupid if they think that the Jesus is the father. Who's Jesus talking to? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, is he talking to himself here? Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Ooh, myself. I, I'm going to commit my hands into my own spirit. Oh, no, these two different people. Still one God, okay? Not polytheists like the Mormons or the Hindus or something. John chapter eight, super easy. Verse 17, even in your law, it has been written that the witnesses of two men is true. I am he who bears witness about myself and the father who sent me bears witness about me. Ah, two witnesses, Jesus, the son and the father. Okay. Two people, still one God. I want to make that clear. Okay. I proceeded forth and have come from God. That is the father for I have not come of myself, but he sent me. So did, Jesus is literally saying he didn't send himself. His father, God sent him. Now there's some Christian binatarians out there. They think that God, the father and God, the son are only God, but the Holy Spirit isn't actually the third person of the Trinity. But we do see in John chapter 16, yeah, the Holy Spirit. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he, this is not an it or an impersonal force. This is the third person of the Trinity. He will not speak from himself or whatever he hears, he will speak and he will close, disclose to you what is to come. So yes, even though the Bible does sometimes describe the spirit of truth as the Holy Spirit, and it does seem like sometimes he is impersonal, but this is clearly the third person of the Trinity. I mean, we even say the only true God is we're not saying that God is impersonal and he's not a person, right? Also, Romans chapter one pretty much tells us the gospel with the Trinity in mind. Gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, who was designated as the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we received grace and apostleship for the obedience of Christ. Though this is a long sentence. What is going on here? Anyways, uh, yeah, if you're a Christian, do not deny the Trinity. You, you're teaching heresy. You believe heresy if you want to deny the Trinity. And the crazy thing is, whenever I go to people, pastors, or anybody who just doesn't believe in the Trinity, they all it also comes with a whole lot of other false doctrine that they teach or believe. It's like, clearly, you do not have understanding. You are twisting the scriptures.